Hello, welcome to BioGrid TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Joshua Mkabuko Nyongolo Nkomo Affectionately called Father Zimbabwe for the role he played in the emergence of the Zimbabwean nation and the slippery rock for his knack to slip through the hands of his enemies, Joshua Mkabuko Nyongolo Nkomo was respected and revered in the country. Nkomo was born on the 19th of June 1917 to Matopos, Matabili land in the then southern Rhodesia to a poor Ndebele family. He was one of eight children. His father worked for the London Missionary Society as a preacher and also was a cattle rancher. When he completed his primary education, Nkomo proceeded to the Cholocho Government Industrial School where he took a course on carpentry. Full of drive and willing to do anything within acceptable conduct to better his lot, after studying at the industrial school for a year, he took to driving and later tried his hands on animal husbandry. He then got a job at Manyame School in Kezi as a school teacher taking the students on carpentry. In 1942, Nkomo decided to further his education in South Africa, where he attended Adams College and the John H. Hofmeyer School of Social Work. He was 25 then. He would later earn a diploma in social work in 1952 from the John Hofmeyer School of Social Work. While in South Africa, he met the great Nelson Mandela who had not become the international icon then. Upon his return to Southern Rhodesia in 1947, Nkomo became an active trade unionist for black railway workers. His leadership qualities couldn't stay hidden and soon he rose to the leadership position of the Southern Rhodesian chapter of the African National Congress in 1952. In 1960, he served as president of the National Democratic Party, which was later declared illegal and banned by the Rhodesian government. Nkomo understood that nothing good comes easy and fighting for the independence of your country is in fact not just difficult but deadly. That did not deter him from joining the armed struggle for independence for which he paid dearly. In 1964, he was arrested and detained at the Gonakuzingwa restriction camp. Some of his colleagues like Ndabaningi Sitole, Robert Mugabe, Eja Tekere were also detained. They were in detention until 1974 for 10 long years. Following his release, Nkomo refused to be intimidated but rather went to Zambia and there he continued to engage in the opposition of the Rhodesian minority white government through armed resistance and negotiation. Astute politician that he was, Nkomo established the National Democratic Party NDP, and was joined by Robert Mugabe in 1960. When the NDP was banned by the white minority government, Nkomo wasted no time and formed another party, the Zimbabwe African People's Union Zapu. Mugabe would later part ways with Zapu and founded the Zimbabwe African National Union ZANU. When the white minority government was ousted, it was Mugabe Zanu that came into power in 1980. While Mugabe became prime minister, Nkomo was offered the ceremonial office of president, but he declined and was appointed minister of home affairs. If Nkomo thought his fight would end after the white minority government was displaced, he was wrong. The ideological differences between himself and Mugabe kept the two men apart. Even more, Mugabe himself of the Shona ethnic group had a great distrust for Nkomo because of his Ndebele ethnic background, fearing that the historically turbulent Ndebele people would start an uprising. In 1982, Mugabe accused Nkomo of plotting a coup after he was falsely tipped off by South African double agents in Zimbabwe's Central Intelligence Organization. 
Mugabe, making a public statement about the incident, said, Zapu and its leader, Dr. Joshua Nkomo, are like a cobra in the house. The only way to deal effectively with a snake is to strike and destroy its head. He then went on to send the soldiers to Nkomo's Matabele land in what was tagged Operation Gukurahundi. About 20,000 Ndebele civilians were killed in the operation, which was seen as an attempt to destroy Zapu and create a one-party state. Nkomo was forced to run for his life and exiled to Britain. Mugabe's government claimed he left the country illegally, dressed as a woman. Nkomo was not silent about it either and refuted the claim that he left dressed as a woman. I expected they would invent stupid stories about my flight. People will believe anything if they believe that. He added that, Nothing in my life had prepared me for persecution at the hands of a government led by black Africans. It is wise to know when to stop fighting. Nkomo applied that wisdom when in 1987, the war horse stopped its charge and agreed to the absorption of Zapu into ZANU, resulting in a unified party called ZANU-PF. As part of the arrangement, Nkomo got the office of vice president, which was an almost powerless position. While his fellow Ndebele people did not like the developments, claiming he sold out, Nkomo speaking to historian Iliakim Sibanda said he took that route to prevent the continued murder of Ndebele people and of Zapu politicians, claiming Mugabe was out to exterminate the Ndebele people. Nkomo was wedded to his wife, Johanna Mafuyana, in October 1949, and together they had four children, Thandiwe Nkomo, Ernest Thutani, Michael Sibangilizwe, and Louis Selule. He was an ordained Methodist lay preacher. Though he was described as not an ardent churchgoer in 1962, he took up the pulpit as a preacher when he retired from politics. He became a Roman Catholic in his last years. Nkomo got death's visit on the 1st of July 1999 at age 82. He died of prostate cancer in Parianyatwa Hospital in Harare. Whatever honors Nkomo missed in life, he got at death. He was declared a national hero upon his death in 1999 and was buried in the National Heroes Acre in Harare. Also, on the 27th of June 2000, the Post and Telecommunications Corporation of Zimbabwe issued a set of four postage stamps which featured Joshua Nkomo. What have we missed out of this biography of Nkomo? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.